Venus, Earth, Mars. Why are their surface temperatures so different? How to explain their relative climate stability? Above all, is there any universal force that determines and stabilizes the surface temperature of any planet in the solar system and beyond? These important questions are to be answered today, surprisingly and quantitatively. Welcome to Yung Tuition. I am Yung. I got a special gift from over there. Are you ready to know? Let's go have fun. Many climate researchers would start his or her talk with a silly premise, namely, there is increasingly man made. Energy flux imbalance at the top of the atmosphere. So when we talk about radiative forcing of climate change, we're going to think about a disbalance in this radiation budget. This so is similar to I'll, a salesman a who's trying to promote a health product by persuading a health person that he or she is actually very sick and, and hence should buy the product at any cost. To understand whether or not a long-term or circular global warming on Earth would occur, one must explore why the air temperature near the surface is so stable other than radiative forcing. To understand whether or not a long-term or circular global warming on Earth would occur, one must explore why the air temperature near the surface is so stable. In my recent talk, I argued that it is air pressure near the surface that dictates the surface temperature, not other way around. Here is a new evidence everyone can understand. In this diagram, the vertical axis represents global mean surface temperature in Kelvin, or GMST for a planet. The horizontal axis is air pressure near the surface of planet in hectopascal. These three bright circular dots in the darkness represent Venus, Earth, and Mars, not in their location in the solar system, but in the temperature pressure coordinate, as I just introduced. The blue curve is theoretically calculated, which is to be explained soon. As you can see, the coordinates of the three planets, namely Mars, Earth, and Venus, can be quantitatively predicted. Is that beautiful? As the surface of pressure on Venus is nearly 100 times higher than that on Earth, I am obliged to display Venus separately for your convenience. The coordinates 93,733 are their air pressure in hectopascal and air temperature in Kelvin, respectively. Similarly, it is necessary to enlarge the position for Mars and Earth, as the surface air pressure of Mars is only 6 hectopascal or 600 pascal. It is clear that for Earth, the surface pressure and surface temperature are 980 hectopascal and 288 Kelvin, respectively. Using the mean surface air pressure of Mars 6 hectopascal, however, the theoretically calculated GMST of Mars is only 100 Kelvin, as you can see here, which is about 100 Kelvin lower than the mean value used in Martian climate modeling. How come? It could be argued that the air pressure on Mars is so low and unstable compared with that of Earth let alone Venus, where even the diurnal variation is almost zero. For Earth, the seasonal variation in the surface air pressure is about uh, 5%, giving the mean surface pressure 908 hectopascal. On Mars, by way of contrast, the seasonal variation in the surface air pressure can be over 25%, giving the mean surface pressure 600 pascal, as shown in the observed data by two Viking landers. 
it must be made clear that the blue curve is simply generated from this Pathum adiabatic equation that you can find in many a thermodynamical textbook, where P is air pressure and V is volume, and the index is close to 1.4 for dry air. Now, I'm going to demonstrate how the Pathum equation is derived step by step. You can skip this part if you are not very keen about mathematics. Unlike other climate researchers, I first assume Earth is pretty health, both physically and mentally, and hence has no trouble in balancing the incoming solar shortwave radiation and the outgoing infrared radiation at the top of atmosphere, and the surface temperature is constant. Therefore, the atmosphere can be treated as a huge thermally isolated system between the condensed matter surface and the vacuum space. The vertical air density distribution is basically determined by gravity. Of course, this doesn't stop dynamical processes that frequently occur inside the system, including the general circulation, bushfires, and volcanic eruptions. Under such adiabatic conditions, the first law of thermodynamics can be simplified as delta U plus P times delta V equal to zero, where U and V are the internal energy and the volume, respectively, because the net heat transfer Q is always zero. Further, using ideal gas law with some calculus, one can easily derive this familiar adiabatic equation, traditionally known as a Pathum equation where gamma is CV over R, and the CV is a capacity with a constant volume, and R is the universal gas constant. Using ideal gas law again, volume V can be replaced by air temperature T. Solving for T, we obtained this simple formula that I used to generate that blue curve. For dry air, gamma is 1.4, as you can find in any textbook. In my feeding, I was obliged to use gamma equal to 1.25 to fit the observed data, which could be justified by the presence of water vapor, I think. In this way, at least, the climate stability of Earth and Venus can be quantitatively explained by such a bloody simple but elegant alliant equation derived from thermodynamics. Please let your grandchildren or parents know this new funding. It is important to notice that the dependence of global mean surface temperature on air pressure near the surface, demonstrated in this diagram, has nothing to do with any greenhouse gases in the atmosphere of any planet, unless air pressure is noticeably increased by their weight, as Pathum equation predicted. As I recently learned, apart from many challenging issues in mathematics and physics, Pasun also studied the stability of the planetary orbits. I think he would be delighted to know his adiabatic equation is used in this talk. Do you agree? Besides, it is interesting to know that in 1806, at the age of 25, Pasun became full professor, succeeding Fourier or Fourier who has been regarded as the father of the greenhouse effect hypothesis. What a tale of two Frenchmen. In passing, it would appear naive and impossible to raise the surface temperature of Mars by adding tons of greenhouse gases in the Martian atmosphere. Although many proposals and computer simulation for making Mars warm again have been published, Last week, one viewer drew my attention to a recent paper published by Nikolov and Zina, who speculated the climate stability can be explained in terms of surface air pressure on a planet. In fact, I had read their early draft back to uh, 2011, and a paper by Wolokin and Rizners published in 2014, which Nikolov and Zina cited several times in their paper. I didn't pay much attention to their papers, but I do remember the curves similar to the Pathum adiabatic equation used here. 
In particular, figure five in the 2011 paper entitled Unified Theory of Climate by Nikonov and Zinner. In their 2017 paper, they show that the curve of the empirical function obtained from their multi-parameter regression fitting of planetary data is similar to Poisson adiabatic equation. Nevertheless, they merely focused on the dependence of their dimensionless ratios on surface air pressure. So it would appear I am the first to directly use the Poisson adiabatic identity to fit the TP diagram for planet in the solar system. In summary, surface air pressure is quantitatively identified as the natural climate stabilizer based on the happy marriage between the well-established first law of thermodynamics and the adiabatic identity first derived by Poisson. Because air pressure is determined by gravity, therefore planetary climate is determined by gravitational force rather than radiative forcing. So when we talk about radiative forcing of climate change, we're going to think about a disbalance in this radiation budget. I guess this conclusion may not sound as a total surprise for some people, as many meteorologists and the weathermen or women have told us again and again, weather will be fine as long as local surface air pressure is high. Thank you for watching. Thank you for donation. Please check if your little bell has been turned off by someone, say AI. See you next time.